Hello, and welcome to the webinar, Steps for Completing the Postseason Registration Form for Outdoor Bocce. This webinar is specifically for coaches to be informed of how to accurately and completely uh, fill out the postseason registration form. And of course, the postseason registration form is the form that's used for district tournaments as well as the state tournament. It actually serves as each team's official roster and is what we use to division teams for again the district tournaments and the state tournament so i have it here on the screen i'll talk through it as you look on and then accompanying this you will also receive this PDF file that, that lists the steps out in detail so without further ado the first step in completing the form is downloading the 2017-18 postseason registration form as a Microsoft Excel document um, and not as a Google Sheets document. So be sure that when you access the document, and it'll be sent as an attachment as a part of this email that you're receiving the webinar in, but it's also accessible through the 2018 Outdoor Bocce folder and that link will also be provided. But please download the form as a Microsoft Excel document. Another note, if your school has more than one team, then please download and complete a separate Excel file for each team. Rather than having one file and then putting each team on multiple sheets, we're requiring you that you download a form for each team for one school so upon downloading the document what you want to do is of course put your school name i'll use wise high school just as demo purposes so here you will put wise high school of course if your team if your school only has one team then that's all you need there however if your school has more than one team, then for this particular team, you would designate it by putting team one. Please do not use variations of your school's colors or mascots to distinguish between multiple teams of one school. We're asking that you use designations of team and then the team number. So again, if your school has more than one team, use your uh, the particular naming structure, Wise High School Dash Team 1. For the next file, it would be Wise High School Dash Team 2, so on and so forth. But if your school only has one team, then you can just put the school name and HS representing your high school. In this cell, you will put the county that your school is situated in, the head coach's full name and then contact number next moving on to your actual roster so as you can see here there is an example there joe smith who's an athlete with corresponding scores you do not have to erase this number it will not calculate in the total nor the averages so leave the example there as well as the example scores and then under that what you will see is there are a total of 10 roster spots so you have eight in the starting lineup and then if your team has subs there are two additional spots at the bottom for subs again in line with the rules and the resource guide for your team to have subs you must have eight players in your starting lineup. You cannot have less than eight players and then have subs. So if you have less than eight players on your team, then all of those players must go in the starting lineup slots that are listed here. So next what you would do is, upon getting all of your measurements, now that you have all measurements for your players, you will fill in your players' names 
in this next box, use the drop down button to designate that player as an athlete or partner. Then here you will put all of the athlete scores. I'll just put random scores for the sake of this demonstration. And as you can see, as we're putting these scores in, over in the far right column, the total is calculating automatically, as well as in the, at the bottom where it says team average, that's also calculating automatically. So you do not have to hit the summation but, button to do your calculations, nor do you have to calculate the average. So here we have John Doe. I designated John as an athlete, put in all nine of his scores, and his total automatically calculates to 400. You see he's the only player right now, so of course the team total automatically calculates to 400. And then at the bottom, you see the team average calculates automatically to 40. Next, we'll put Jane Doe in. We'll designate Jane as a unified partner. And I'll just copy and paste these scores for time's sake. But here, you see now Jane and John are, are both calculated and their total was 800, yielding an average of 80 automatically calculated for you. However, that team average of 80 is not accurate, of course. So what you would need to do is once you've put in each of your players' names and their scores, you must go over to the total column, and for every empty roster spot, you must erase the zeros that are in the total column, and that goes for starting roster spots, the starting lineup, as well as substitutes. So Jane and John's scores are both 400, so we know that their average is 400, and you can see that once we erase those zeros, then it's accurately reflected in the team average. If those zeros are left there, then of course, as you saw before we erased them, it would give you an inaccurate average. So it's essential that once all scores and players are implemented, those zeros are erased, and it's also essential that those zeros are not erased until you've put in all scores. It gets kind of funky if you go in and erase the zeros first and then put scores in. So please keep that in mind. And next, when it comes to actually saving this file and naming it for it to be sent to your district representative who will send it into Special Olympics, we are require, requiring a specific naming structure. So, um, first thing is all caps, the two letter county abbreviation, why is it in Prince George's County? So I'll just use PG underscore. I will put Wise High School. And if, again, this is only one team for Wise, then that's all I need to put. I can save it and send it into my district rep as is. However, let's say Wise had multiple teams, then I would designate this one as Team 1. I would save this, close it out, and open up a whole new, download a whole new postseason registration form for Team 2 and name it accordingly. So that is it in a nutshell. Again, I've also provided a list of the steps that were just shown in the video. If you look down at the bottom, I've also included the specific naming structure for you to use. If you have any questions about filling out this form or taking assessments, please feel free to reach out to your district representative, who in turn, if need be, will reach out to myself, Brian Montgomery, Chair Bocci. And I uh, hope this video was helpful. Look forward to everybody getting their forms in on time, getting their measurements done. Measurements can begin April 2nd. And uh, continue success for the rest of the season. Thank you.